For this video, we'll be taking apart the Motorola Moto G34. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. Before we start, the SIM tray needs to be removed. We can see a red rubber gasket around the SIM tray. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a pry tool can be used to pry it off. Here's a better look at the vegan leather back cover. Now there are 19 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Once the screws have been removed, a plastic pry tool needs to be placed in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and ran along the edges to pop off the catches. Here's a look at the plastic back housing. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. So you don't need to take apart the phone to replace those. The LED flash is also located here. As well as an antenna flex cable here and one on this side. Looking at the other side, we can see additional antenna flex cables around the border. We can see a large sheet of graphite film over here, as well as one on the bottom to help transfer heat. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. The white and black coaxial cable can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board. Alright, so looking at the main board, we can see a 50 megapixel primary camera and the 2 megapixel macro lens. Neither of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a liquid damage indicator sticker which is that white sticker a secondary microphone on the top, and copper tape on the shield to help transfer heat. Looking at the other side, we can see the proximity sensor located on top, the 16 megapixel front facing camera, the SIM and memory card reader, as well as more graphite film and thermal paste on the back to help transfer heat. Once the shield cover has been removed, we can see additional thermal paste on top of the processor, RAM, and this chip over here. We also have a look at the ROM or storage chip. Here's a look at the bottom speaker assembly, and there's a rubber gasket around the opening. Here's the speaker itself. When it comes to removing the battery, there is no pull pouch or pull tabs provided in order to help you pry it off, so we'll need to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply some to the edges of the battery, and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath 
make it easier to pry it off. Here's a look at the 5000 mAh battery. Once the battery has been removed, we can see this flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard, as well as the screen flex cable which is routed through an opening in the midframe. This flex cable not only connects the screen to the main board, but also connects to the subboard over here on the bottom. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the back cover, at which point you disconnect the battery cable and pry the battery off, giving you access to this cable. You disconnect this cable from the main board, as well as this one from the subboard. You'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back to the openings in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. Looking at the subboard, we can see rubber gaskets around the charger port and headphone jack. The primary microphone is located over here underneath the shield. Here's a look at the other side. Now on this phone there are rubber gaskets and mesh filters on the openings for the microphones on the frame, but they are seated against the frame, so if you were to accidentally insert your SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you wouldn't damage the microphone since the microphones are seated above the holes, but you would damage the mesh filters or rubber gaskets. Moving on, the vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner, which is held on with some adhesive. If you needed to replace that, just apply some heat and gently pry it off. There are two additional liquid damage indicator stickers, one located over here, and the other one underneath the sim reader over here. The flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located on this side, and that can be peeled off if needed to replace. Then finally, the earpiece speaker is located on top, which is also held on with some adhesive. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.